Welcome to Inside Roanoke. I'm Melinda Mayo, the city's communications and media officer. Today, we're going to hear about Neighborhood Month. We're also going to learn about Lead Safe Roanoke and a lot more, so stay with us. Lead poisoning affects over one million children today. Find out when your home, school, and daycare center was built. If it was before 1978, it probably contains lead-based paint. Contact Lead Safe Roanoke at 853-5682 for more information. Welcome back, and my guest is Marla Robertson, and Marla is Education and Outreach Coordinator for the Lead Safe program. Hey, Marla, start by telling us what Lead Safe is. I mean, what do you all do? Uh, we're actually a grant-funded program. Um, we're funded through Housing and Urban Development, and we're here to help families with young children get rid of lead hazards in their home. Mm -hmm. So how would someone qualify for this program? There are a few qualifications you would need to have. You first need to live in Roanoke City, um, not be in a floodplain. You need to meet the median income guidelines, and of course have a child age five or under. Okay, so for people who may not know, talk a little bit about what lead poisoning is and, you know, where does it come from? Um, lead poisoning can happen to anyone, even your pet. Really? Uh, yes, hmm. um, but what we focus on are uh, families with young children and the, um, the younger the child, the greater the risk. Um, so they can get ADD, ADHD, um, they can lose IQ points, it could be harder for them to graduate high school because of their um, disabilities. Mm -hmm. They can also go into the juvenile justice system because of their, um, the brain damage that it, it causes. It impairs their learning, is that Absolutely. what you Wow. So if I'm in my house and I want to see what, what does lip paint look like, what am I looking for? It's actually a, a, what we look for is like an alligator scale kind of texturing or an octangular um, uh, where it's kind of diminished in that kind of structure mm -hmm. versus latex paint, which you can kind of pick at and peel off in a strip. This has a really um, unique texture that kind of shows up like like an alligator scale. Right, and, and so houses, what, I mean there's a certain time period from when the house was built, these houses are more likely to have yes, lead. The older the home, the greater the risk. That's what I'm trying to say, um, yeah. But every home built before 1978 needs to be checked. Okay. Um, and that's pretty much 87.9% of the city. So more than likely you do live in an older home yeah. if you're in Roanoke City. Mm -hmm. So this is why we're here. We yeah. have a, an incredible architecture and all these great homes out there we want to preserve. We just need to clean the housing stock and make yeah. sure that that's safe for the folks out there living in them. So if I had a child, and I, if I was in a home that had lead paint and I w had a child, how would I be able to tell? What are some of the signs that the child's being affected or poisoned? What's See, it? it's a tricky question Is it? because sometimes there are no signs at all. Hmm. Um, sometimes it could be a temper tantrum or symptoms can look like the flu, which is common for any child. Right. So the only way you can know for sure is to talk to your pediatrician, have your child tested, and it's a simple, simple little blood test, mm -hmm. um, and usually your doctor will ask leading questions, um, and you want to have your children tested at age one and two. Mm -hmm. So let's say I'm pretty sure I have lead paint in my home, and I have a child, and I fit all the qualifications. How do I go about applying for the program? You would just need to contact us, and we'll put our information at the bottom of the screen. Yeah. Um, but if you would like to call us, it's 540-853-5682. Um, and of course, our website is uh, the regular uh, roanokeva.gov .gov website, mm -hmm. um, and then it's slash lead safe. And um, you can go on there and get an application, or you can call us. Um, also, you can like us on Facebook. So you fill out the application, they send it into your office, and then when will they, how does that work? When do they know or how do they know? What we do is we have a few requirements like a, a birth certificate or a photo ID, just some general things that you would normally do for, for um, signing up for mm -hmm. anything, especially with your child. Um, and after that, um, all those qualifications are made, then we give you a ring and we let you know that um, you've qualified for our program and we'd be happy to help you. Okay. So one more time for people who are interested in knowing more about this, give the a website or phone number or website, how they get website facebook or call us and like i said we'll put that at the bottom of the screen please get your pens and pencils out mm -hmm. and uh, just give us um, a call we'd be happy to even discuss um, maybe you don't qualify for a program but you may qualify for our rrp training which is renovate repair and paint um, so those out there that want to maybe do diy yeah 
without using the program, we can offer you some training for free. Okay, sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll be right back. A little soap and water can go a long way. When you wash your car in a driveway, the soap, oil, and grease can flow into storm drains and pollute our rivers and streams. Always try to wash your car on the lawn. This will allow the water to soak into the ground. If you have to wash your car in a driveway, make sure the water drains onto your lawn and not a storm drain. Use a biodegradable soap. Dump your wash bucket in your sink or allow it to filter through the grass. It's easy to keep your car and our waterways clean by doing the right thing. Welcome back. My guest is Bob Clement. Bob's our Neighborhood Services Coordinator. Hi, hey, Bob, May is Neighborhood Month. It is. Tell us about that. What is Neighborhood Month and how, when and how does it occur? It happens every year during the month of May. Um, neighborhoods undertake um, activities to bring neighborhoods together and it occurs across the city and everyone's invited to attend. That's well, what's so cool. Who coordinates it? Do the neighborhoods do it or is it our office? Um, it? It's kind of a partnership between the Office of Neighborhood Services and the various different neighborhoods okay. who host events. So um, they'll start working on them in April mm -hmm. and um, then they'll send me the information and then I in turn will publicize it for them. So your role is to get the word out. Exactly. Okay. And talk about some of the activities, examples of things that they do for Neighborhood Month. We have some great events planned this year. As always, uh, Airly Court's doing their yard sale this year, <laughs> which I think you recall last year, it's, it's a 24-block yard sale <laughs> wow. with over 100 individual yard sales taking place, and that's always held the, first sat or the Saturday before Mother's Day okay. every year. Um, we're, here, we're here at the Gainsborough Library. This will be the site of the Gainsborough Southwest Community Organization block party, again, an annual event. They'll close off Patton Avenue and have music, <laughs> dancing in the streets, mm -hmm. uh, information booths, food, beverage, great, great fun time. Um, who else? Melrose Rugby, their fish fry. I was going to say. Uh, that's on May 18th, I believe, which is a Friday. And uh, if you're in the mood for a great fish lunch, uh -huh. you cannot beat Melrose Rugby's fish fry. And then Avenel is also having a yard sale, um, Memorial Day Monday. So there's just a whole wide range of events taking place throughout the month of May. And why do we do Neighborhood Month? What's the purpose behind it, Bob? You know, it's, it's an opportunity for neighbors to get together mm -hmm. and celebrate their neighborhoods as well as to, to meet one another. And it's just, it's just a fun time. It's a, it's a social event. And by having those social events, it helps to build community, and that's really what it's all about. I was going to say, there's a benefit to the entire community, not Absolutely. just the individual neighborhoods, but talk a little bit about how they, it helps them to connect. Absolutely, because if people are willing to step outside of their comfort zone, of their na own neighborhood, mm -hmm. and attend one of these events in a neighborhood different from their own, they're going to find and meet people and, and neighbors that are just like them. Yeah. It's, just, it's just a great way for people to get out, meet one another, and be in community with one another. How could people uh, see a list of all the events? Where can they we, go for that? We uh, promote the uh, activities online okay. at roanokeva.gov forward slash neighborhood month. That's where you easy to print list if mm -hmm. folks want to. It'll be on the city's website. It'll also be on the local media websites. Um, and we'll be putting the word out through Roanoke's uh, citizen engagement processes. So, yeah, we hopefully will see folks attending. <laughs> hey, if somebody had a question, how can they get it? Give me a shout. What's your number? 853-5210. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, I hope Melinda. it's a very successful Thank month. you. Hope to see you at an event. Okay. We'll be right back. The Municipal Volunteer Program is designed with a focus on community outreach to encourage citizens to participate in local government. Serving as a volunteer will not only enhance your knowledge about the city, but also enrich your life and greatly benefit your community. Volunteer as an individual or with a group, every week or once a year. Whatever your skills and interests, there's an opportunity for you. If you're interested in becoming a volunteer, please complete an application by logging on to veronokeva.gov slash MVP or calling 853-1801. Welcome back. My guest is Dominique Sparrow, and Dominique is a foster care parent recruiter for our social services department. Yes. We want to talk about foster, our foster care program, and we're emphasizing foster care in May. Why are we doing that? 
Well, as you know, uh, May is Foster Care Awareness Month, mm -hmm. and what it is aimed to do is it's aimed to bring awareness to the need for foster care nationwide, but most specifically here in Roanoke City. Mm -hmm. um, so we take this time to bring awareness to the city and let them know the need, but we also like to use this time to celebrate our current families and let them know that we appreciate them opening their homes right. and their hearts to our children. Mm -hmm. So um, this May, for example, we will be having a banquet for our current resource families just to thank them and to show them appreciation. That's great. Well, I, you know, some people don't know a lot about foster care, so I'm hoping you can share some things yeah. with us today. First of all, talk about what are some of the common myths about foster care? There are a lot of common myths when it comes to talking about foster care. I think one of the biggest ones, if I could point out one, is that when we receive older children into our care, that they're there because of something they've done. And that's not the case in most cases when we get older children in. Mm -hmm. um, they're generally there because of either abuse or neglect as a result of the, their parents' choices. Right. So these are still you know, young children. And when I say older children, I don't even just mean teens. I'm talking about even placing a 10-year-old. Really? Um, it can be difficult because they have a bad reputation for they must have done something. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why they're here. And that's not the case. Um, another really big myth and misconception that we see a lot is that um, the parents don't deserve to get their children back. And, you know, one thing that we like to emphasize our goal as Roanoke City Department of Social Services is that we, our goal is to reunite the child back with their family. Right. Everybody goes through a rough patch and they go through situations. And so we try to allot them the time and give them the resources mm -hmm. to be able to fix that. So that way that we can reunite the child with their family because that's where children generally thrive best is when they are with their biological family. Well, and that relates back to something I know you and I spoke about, and that was people sometimes hesitate because they think they're expected to adopt, and you're saying that the real goal is to get the children back with them. Absolutely. There is no uh, expectation or pressure on our resource families to adopt children because again our goal is to reunite the child with their family. Now once we have exhausted all of our options with mm -hmm. biological parents and they are not able to meet those expectations that is when adoption will come into play and we talk about that and even when it does the family that is currently fostering they get first preference so we will ask them if they would be interested in adoption yeah. and they have the option and ability to say no you know we would just look into foster mm -hmm. which is okay because mm -hmm. we have families that are available and ready and have been trained and certified to be able to adopt that child right. if the current family is not willing to. And, and foster care parents are not expected to bear the burden, financial burden. There's some financial assistance, correct? Absolutely. Um, the one, That's one thing that, and it's Virginia Department of Social Services as a whole, but here in Roanoke, we provide a lot of resources to our families. And I think that that's also another myth that I try to raise awareness of and to educate uh, the community about is that in addition to financial resources for, you know, room and board, because we understand that their monthly bills may go mm -hmm. up slightly with having another person in the home, yeah. we provide room and board, we provide money for clothing, we provide money for, um, you know, if the child wants to do like anything recreational. So there's that financial support there, as well as training support. Uh, mm -hmm. In addition to the pre-service training that we do, which is PRIDE, yeah. we also require our families to undergo an additional 10 hours of um, service training every year okay. um, to maintain that status of being an open home. Uh, we have four major events throughout the year where we have you know, guest speakers that will come in and talk to our families about topics such as trauma mm -hmm. and self-care and things along those lines. Right. Um, and we also, again, like the banquet that we have, that we have our families come to. So there's a, a huge support system that we put in place for our okay. families as well. And you spoke about training. Are there other requirements for being a foster care parent? Yes. Um, in addition to the pre-service training that is a requirement and then the in-service training, uh, you also have to undergo um, background check. And that background check consists of, you know, fingerprinting, mm -hmm. um, CPS investigation, and then we also do our um, in-home assessment. And what that in-home assessment does is it allows our coordinators to come meet you mm -hmm. um, in the, your home atmosphere and just talk to you and get to know you.
Dominique, is there a shortage of foster care parents? Do we have a shortage? There absolutely is a shortage here in Roanoke City of foster parents. And why do you think that is? I think the biggest reason why there mm -hmm. is a huge shortage of foster uh, parents in the Roanoke City area is because they're not aware of the need. So they don't know, uh, you know, the number of children that come into our care. They don't know that that need is out there. So I think that some of it is just not knowing. Mm -hmm. If somebody was watching today, what would you tell them uh, they were, if they were interested in becoming a foster care parent, they're just kind of considering it. What are some of the rewards that you would say come from being a foster care parent? I think the biggest reward uh, in my opinion, mm -hmm. for taking on such a role as that, is the ability to impact the life. And this is something that you and I had discussed, um, when I, and I'm so passionate about it because uh, we had a young lady that comes into our last session of Pride, and it's usually a panel discussion, and she made a very profound statement, and she said that her foster families had placed a seed in her. And although they were not there to watch it grow, it did. And mm -hmm. she is very successful. You know, she's graduating at Radford University mm -hmm. and, you know, she's gone on to get her master's degree. And that's something that, you know, I think is a really big reward is that ability to impact a life. And sometimes, uh, although that, you know, it may not be considered at the time, not only are you impacting the child, but you also have the opportunity to impact the biological parent as well. Right. Because one thing at Roanoke City we strongly encourage is family engagement. And when we say family engagement, we encourage our resource families to develop a relationship with the biological family as well to let them know that we're here to help. Mm -hmm. We're not here to try and take your child, but yeah. we're here to be a support for you as well. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it can be a dual reward there where not only do you touch the child's life and give them the ability to thrive in a stable home, but you can also offer that support to the biological family as well to let them know everyone's, you know, gone through something. And we're right. here to support you and give you the time that you need on that road to recovery, whatever it is that you're recovering yeah. from. Well, if somebody watching was interested and wanted more information, how could they get that? If they wanted more information, I'm the person to contact. My name is Dominique Sparrow. Um, I am the resource family recruiter. You can call me at 540-853-2403. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing it. Very interesting, and I hope someone who's watching might thank consider you. being a foster Absolutely. parent. Absolutely. Okay, thanks. We'll be right back. Want to learn how to manage your money better, save for that car or dream home, or be able to bounce back from bad credit mistakes? Bank on Roanoke Valley can help. Bank on works with local banks, credit unions, and local governments to offer free classes at local libraries in our community. It's easy, free, and it's happening right where you live. Check out the calendar of classes or sign up at bankonrv.org or call 777-4200 for more information. Welcome back. My guests are Sheila Umberger and Amber Lowry with Roanoke Public Libraries. And we want to catch up on some things that are happening with the library today. Let's start by talking about the summer reading program. Tell us sure. what that, when does that start? You know, what are the dates? So, so yeah, I mean, I guess we're moving right up to it now. It starts on June 18th and we'll run all the way to the end of July. Um, but our summer reading program this year is reading takes you everywhere so we're really excited but it does start here the second week of June we like to give the children a week or two before right after they get out of school before we start programming yeah. up so they have a few weeks of rest and relaxation. How does the program work? So the reading program kind of is twofold. Um, we of course are incentivizing children to come in, check out books, read together as a family, read individually. Um, we really encourage pleasure reading during the summer. So that's always one of our important initiatives when we're looking at the summer okay. reading program. Uh -huh. But it's also a program, it's program based. We have lots of fun activities that we bring in throughout the summer that children don't really have exposure to otherwise. Okay. Is, are there incentives or rewards for? There are, so for books that they read and the programs they attend. We have treasure boxes and they go fishing through um, our treasure box to get different prizes every time they come to the library. But we also have uh, prizes that they'll get for reading so many books. So we have sunglasses and teddy bears and books that we'll be giving away throughout the summer. And there are activities throughout the program to bring Correct. them into the library, right? Correct. Yeah, we have uh, Tyco drummers coming this year. Uh, we're supporting our local theaters with Roanoke Children's Theater as well as Mill Mountain Theater.
Theater. They'll be performing. Uh, we have storytellers, music programs, um, STEM and STEAM programs mm -hmm. for those science kids, right. um, as well as different role-playing games and even a puzzle room this year, wow. much like the escape room. What, so. do you, what do they seem to enjoy the most? Do you get any feedback? Oh, you know, sometimes it's, it's usually anything outdoor activities that's a little or any activity that brings something that they don't think should be in the library. <laughs> so uh, anything loud or there's running or there might be something messy, that's mm. usually what they enjoy because they think that's not what they should be doing here. But we try <laughs> to teach them that's not the truth. And there's a, a place they can get information about the program? Right. They can visit our Facebook page or they can go to roanokeva.gov backslash library and learn about all the programs we have for children, and teens, and adults as well. Okay, and one of the other big things that's going on right now is some improvements to our facilities for libraries. Sheila, talk about that a little. All right, we're very excited. We, as you know, we've been renovating a lot of our facilities now for almost 10 years, right. which is hard to believe. So one of the things that we'll have funding for after July 1st is to refresh or refurbish Gainsborough, which was our first project in 2009. I remember that, yeah. So it's had a lot of uses very well loved branch, neighborhood mm -hmm. branch, and we're very excited to be able to refresh the teen center, the community room. Uh, we plan to do new shelving, and uh, it's just going to be really fun to engage the community in discussing what we're going to do, but it'll be all the inside right. part. Uh, we also have funding for an e-branch at South Roanoke, Okay. and we've had a high demand for that. Right now we have two e-branches. We have one at Valley View Mall and one at the Garden uh, City uh, Parks and Rec Center. Right. And tell them, for people who don't know, what is an e-branch? Well, an e-branch in this case is basically a big picture is it's a service point, a place in a neighborhood where we want to provide services that isn't necessarily a full uh, building, a okay. library building. So in this particular case, all of them ha have had uh, a book drop mm -hmm. for convenience. Uh, both at Valley View and at Garden City, we have lockers. And we have a pretty active, a very active story time at Valley View, right. so we do programs. Uh, in this particular case, we are looking at a new technology uh, where it's it's like a um, almost like a vending machine, mm -hmm. a nice <laughs> vending machine uh -huh. that will hold maybe 400 books. Wow! And so we're very excited to look at that. We just saw that at a recent conference, mm -hmm. and a person could walk up and put their card in and, and get a book, and we can fill it up with books. So that's something we're looking yeah. very seriously at for South Rene. But we will be holding community meetings in the fall okay. uh, to get input and, and you know decide where we want to put it and that sort of thing. But uh, we've had a high uh, interest in that from the neighborhood. And then there's something about Melrose. Don't leave that <laughs> That's out. That's where we're currently working okay. on. So we're very excited about that too. We've been working this for a couple years. We're going to be we're renovating in the Goodwill uh, facility on Melrose Avenue, okay. and so uh, next year we'll be moving from our current location into from a 6,200 square foot branch into almost a 14,000 square oh, foot facility. Goodness. Wow! Very excited. There's small business center, community room that can be used after hours. Uh, a STEAM lab, which mm -hmm. tied to what Amber's saying, which will have science and technology mm -hmm. makerspace, mm -hmm. quiet reading room, uh, and we're going to be sharing computer training with the Goodwill uh, staff as well. So a, a good spot for the community yeah. to be able to, to get joint services on a lot of things. So the viewers should be kind of watching for these new things that are coming up. Right. Right. If they had a question, how could they? Again, they can visit our Facebook okay. page. and. Uh, again, we're just super excited to be working on the projects, but we we, can t we have several more, so we're we're just working through everything. Sounds so exciting! <laughs> I know the libraries are just the coolest place to be right now. <laughs> so thanks. Thank you. And we'll be right back. It is important for both restaurants and homeowners to help keep our waterways clean and safe. Never pour cooking oil or grease into sinks, parking lots, or streets. The oil and grease can enter our waterways through storm drains. Always try to recycle the oil and grease or put it into the trash. If you have a spill, clean it up by using a drying agent like cat litter. Never hose down spills. Keep dumpster and trash can lids closed. Restaurants should clean floor mats and garbage cans in a mop sink. It's easy to keep our waterways clean by doing the right thing. Welcome back. My guest is Stephanie Long. Stephanie's the marketing coordinator for Roanoke Parks and Recreation. Hey, Stephanie, we want to tell our viewers about an award that Parks and Rec got recently, the Governor's Environmental Excellence Award. What, what is that award? Who gave it to you? Give us some information about it. Sure. Um, on April 5th, we were awarded the um, Governor's Award Honorable Mention for 
our implementation of the Virginia Outdoors Plan. Okay. Um, and what that is, is it's the state's comprehensive plan for all things land conservation, outdoor recreation, and open space planning. Uh, so the award, which was administered through the Virginia Department of um, Environmental Quality, um, was given to us for two projects in particular um, that we implemented from our VOP. Okay, tell us about those projects. What were they and, and where are they? Um, there were two projects. Um, it's important for me to note that we did not do this alone. Um, okay. This was done with a lot of help from several partners. Mm -hmm. uh, so the first one was the kayak launch that was built over at the bridges off of Jefferson Avenue, kind of near uh, Moe's and Starbucks and Star Hill. Okay. Um, and that was completed with help from Roanoke Outside as well as the bridges. And I've got a cheat sheet here because uh, <laughs> okay. there were quite a few people um, who helped. So EC Pace and company donated the construction, um, Balzer and Associates, Boxley Materials, and Rockdale Quarries donated um, all of the materials for it. And then we had financial support from dozens of businesses, including Carillion Clinic and UBS Financial Services. Okay. So that was the first one. All right. Uh, the second one was for trail work that was done out at Carvin's Cove Natural Reserve. Um, and again, we had quite a lot of help from Pathfinders for Greenways, um, Blue Ridge Gravity, as well as uh, Roanoke International Mountain Bike Association to build, like I said, almost 10 miles of brand new trails out there. Wow, so not just companies, but volunteers yes. came out and did the work. Lots of volunteers, some who aren't even associated with some of those organizations. Yes. Why are these two projects important to the citizens who live here? I mean, how will they benefit? Well, uh, a main priority of our department, as well as our community partners, um, is to make the outdoors more accessible. Um, we recently had uh, community input meetings for our master plan uh, that's coming up pretty soon. Yeah. Here. And a lot of what we heard was that people want to continue accessing the outdoors. So that's better access to blueways, mm -hmm. um, more trails. Um, some of it is more greenways and better connectivity through our greenways. So right. it's really important for our department to be able to provide that to our citizens. So these two projects in particular, um, we're incredibly proud of because we're able to do that. And Roanoke Parks and Recreation is all about vibrant outdoor spaces and the experience of outdoors. Right. How do these two tie into that? Uh, well, uh, like I said, the kayak launch gives us the access to the blue ways. So paddling uh, is, is very big right now. Is it? Um, we offer quite a lot of programs for mm -hmm. um, stand-up paddle boards, kayaking, canoeing, all of that stuff. So this gives our citizens, and well, as well as you know, people throughout the valley, the opportunity right. to be able to live a healthy, active lifestyle um, with better access to the Roanoke River. Mm -hmm. And same with the Cove. Uh, these trails give people an opportunity to bike more, hike, um, run. If you're really into trail running, <laughs> there's some elevation gain out there. So, yeah. you know, good luck to you if you choose to do that. But it gives people the opportunity to do mm -hmm. that. Um, so we're really proud of being able to be a part of it. And Carvin's Cove is like, I think, the second largest municipal park, park. Mm -hmm. in the country, it right? It is, yes. So it's really special to have that and have those trails there. Yes, yes. It's Anything else you'd like us to know about the award or any of the projects? Um, we're just very proud of this award and I know that um, in the coming months um, when we can kind of apply for it again, mm -hmm. um, we're, we're looking to possibly do some stuff with our Tinker Creek Greenway plan. So Great. be on the lookout for that. Yeah. If somebody wanted uh, to know more about it, they had a question, how could they get in touch with you? Uh, yeah, they can visit playroanoke.com. We have a blog post up about it that has mm -hmm. a little bit more details. Um, and they can also give us a call uh, if they have you know, more specific questions mm -hmm. at 540-853-2236. Well, congratulations on the award. Thank you. Sounds pretty cool. Thank you. Thanks. We're very proud. We'll be right back. If you would like to adopt a pet, did you know that you can also go to the RCACP website and their Facebook page to look at pets for adoption? It's easy to do. Simply go to their website at rcacp.org or visit their Facebook page. Both sites include information and pictures of animals waiting to be adopted. Help make a difference in the life of a pet today. Adopt from the Regional Center for Animal Care and Protection. We hope you've enjoyed this month's show and we'll see you next time on Inside Roanoke.